I think one of the biggest lessons, one of the biggest mindset shifts that I kind of had to learn the hard way a few times was that in your own practice, you can say no to someone, whereas you can't <laughs> in a regular in-network clinic. And being in a regular in-network clinic, seeing 15, 18, 20 patients a day was really just beating me up. And I just felt like I couldn't keep up that pace anymore. When you're in an in-network clinic, Doctors refer people, patients don't necessarily want to be there. It's a kind of a set fixed schedule of twice a week for six weeks, whatever. And we saw a lot of the same thing there. And I just felt like it was very monotonous at my old job. And then when you're in your cash-based mindset, for me, I felt like I could really focus. I feel like I could be really creative with what I was doing. I wasn't bound to mountains of paperwork. The freedom wise, it was just a, felt like a weight off my shoulders that I could mm -hmm. kind of treat someone the way I wanted to. Hello and welcome. This episode is an interview of one of my private practice coaching clients, Nikki Dumas of Recovery Sports Therapy in Massachusetts. I've been honored to be a part of her private practice journey pretty much from the beginning when she started out as a side hustle and then transitioned to full time to now where she is booked booking new clients four to five weeks out in advance and, and looking for clinicians to help her with the incredible flow of cash pay patients that she's generated. And in this interview, you're going to hear all about how she's done it and the things she's had to overcome along the way, the mindset challenges, the strategies and tactics that have worked best, the things that she's learned from. So it's really, really awesome interview and full of actionable strategies. Now, if you hear me ask or not ask a question that you have, save it, write it down, and you can join us and ask Nikki yourself. This is one of these interviews that we're doing right before we have our monthly featured member Q&A. So every week we meet as a group and I'm answering most of the questions, but once a month we have a member start that Q&A out and answer any questions that anyone has. So if you have a question that you don't hear the answer to in this interview, please join us. You can go to drjaredcarter.com forward slash mastermind and then use the promo code to get 50% off your first month. Use the promo code June 50, June 50. That'll give you 50% off and then you can ask Nikki your questions directly. With all that said, thank you so so much as always for joining and here is nikki dumas all right here we are nikki welcome and thank you yeah thanks for having me yeah so well it's been quite a while since we started working together in the mastermind coaching group and mm -hmm. and you've come a long way i mean i remember when you were first starting out so why don't you start us out with what brought you to that point of saying i'm going to start a private practice and i'm going to be cash-based yeah, I actually, this is a little bit of a weird full circle moment for me because five years ago, I was listening to this podcast pretty regularly and now here I am. So that's pretty cool. But part of what drove me to even, you know, think of this, having a cash-based practice was always kind of a dream of mine that I never knew it was going to actually be possible or not. And then my niche is ehlers downloads or people with connective tissue disorders or EDS. And I have EDS myself and being in a regular in-network clinic, seeing 15, 18 and 20 patients a day was really just beating me up. And I just felt like I couldn't keep up that pace anymore. And the same old complaints that a lot of other physical therapists have and that they didn't feel like they were giving good care to anybody. You can't, I feel like you can't really give good care and you're seeing three people at once. So I'm very lucky in the kind of fact that my husband has a really great, good, stable paying job. And he was like, just go for it. Just do it if this is what you want to do. So I started out teaching a mobility class at a local gym here and started seeing people on a mobile basis and started looking for a brick and mortar clinic. In my city here, it was a little bit difficult and particularly with parking anywhere and with seeing folks with chronic pain and, you know, a lot of disability, I can't ask them to walk a mile down the road. So it mm -hmm. took me a little bit of time to find a space. And then when I did, I promptly quit my job and picked up kind of where at my new clinic. And I'm lucky enough that I have a specific niche that a bunch of people followed me, which was nice. So I wasn't starting from zero and that's kind of how I ended up there. So were you seeing that many patients as a mobile PT with, as it was a side hustle, obviously, mm -hmm. like how, how full-time were you in the other job and how much time were you putting into your side hustle before you went full-time into your practice? Yeah, I was working like 20 to 25 hours a week at my previous employment. And then I was probably working anywhere from five to 10 hours in my side hustle a week, not necessarily always seeing patients, but business planning and kind of yeah. research on real estate and where I was going to end up. Um, okay. 
And how long did it take you? Was it completely tied that transition to full-time in your practice? Was it fully tied to whenever you found a brick and mortar spot or had you considered like going full-time mobile before then? Or was it, how did you make that decision of jumping to full-time ending your stable employment? Yeah, good question. So for me at the time, my son was really little and With my husband's crazy work schedule, it was just kind of the time I had available. And sometimes that would change quickly. So I didn't always have consistent, reliable hours outside of my employment to get to patients. And I oftentimes I saw a lot of them at the gym. So I tried to schedule them. I teach the mobility class and I'd see two, three, four of them at the gym and then kind of continue on with my day. So that's how I started. Also, when I was going to places, lugging my table and supplies and my bag of tricks and stuff, it was also beating me up a little bit because those things get heavy on my, because I also have Ehlers Danlos syndrome. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And so when you went full time, what was that like? I mean, I know there's a lot of folks that start out like you did with employment and start their practice as a side hustle. You got your space and you went full time, but from kind of a mindset or emotional perspective, were you totally confident you were going to be able to ramp up and get busy quickly? Were you scared? Were you somewhere in the middle? Tell us more about that. Yeah, I was a little bit in the middle. I was kind of equal parts excited and really scared. Like I said, I wasn't starting from zero. I had some patients that did follow me and I'm also really terrible with social media. So for me, my strategy was more like hit the ground with the networking and visiting people and gyms and and stuff like that. But it was pretty scary. And I found that when I was working in my old employment and doing my side hustle, it was a little bit of a tough transition for me mindset wise, where I would be in my cash based mindset. And then the next day I'd be in network clinic mindset. And I I was struggling with that a little bit at the end too. Tell me more about that. What do you, when you just give us more description of what you would consider a cash based mindset versus insurance mindset. Yeah. I think when you're in an in-network clinic, doctors refer people, patients don't necessarily want to be there. It's a kind of a set fixed schedule of twice a week for six weeks, whatever. And we saw a lot of the same thing there. And I was just getting a little bit, I just felt like it was very monotonous at my old job. And it was just, it was, and then when you're in your cash based mindset for me, I felt like I could really focus. I feel like I could be really creative with what I was doing. I wasn't bound to mountains of paperwork or I could dry needle how I wanted to. And it just, the freedom wise, it was just a felt like a weight off my shoulders that I could Mm -hmm. kind of treat someone the way I wanted to. And then going back the next day to the old job was, was tough because then I couldn't do what I wanted. I was very restricted. So that was tough. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest lessons, one of the biggest mindset shifts that I kind of had to learn the hard way a few times was that in your own practice, you can say no to someone, whereas you can't (laughs) in a regular in-network clinic, but it's been a little bit of a learning curve, but now, especially now that my schedule is full, it's a lot easier for me to be like, this isn't the best fit. I'm going to refer you to someone else who I think would be. And every time I've even kind of been on the fence about if this one's got someone's going to be a good fit or not, it hasn't been a good fit. So I was never able to say no to a patient before. So being able to build a practice of people that I want to see has been really great. Yeah. And birds of a feather flock together. I often say like, if you see like a low hanging fruit opportunity to get patients in the door, cause you really need patients, but they're really not your ideal patient or the type of person that you good at or want to treat, but you start to get a referral base of that type of patient or person. All of a sudden it's like, man, now I'm fully booked, but half my patients, I'm not really wanting to spend half of my day with. So it's hard to resist though. When you need patients in the beginning, it, it's hard to say no and not go after every opportunity. So before we move on from that kind of startup point of you going, getting started, or when you transition full-time. I also wanted to ask if there were any other lessons learned for those out there that are either now doing a side hustle or thinking about getting started, whether part-time or full-time. Any other big takeaways that you can remember from that period of your journey that you passed along? That's a good question. I think that in hindsight, I wish I had made the jump sooner. I wish I had just If I could do it over again, I would have spent more time on the mobile side and tried to building the clientele versus kind of waiting till I found a spot and using that extra bit of spare time. I had to really go visit other, other folks and other gyms and stuff. Okay. Very good. So we've kind of already heard you talk a little bit about both EDS and then from a networking perspective and just how you got started with mobility, having that gym or fitness based audience or niche, Mm -hmm. um, Would you say that's that that's accurate that you have kind of both of those niches or that's what you pursued in your practice? 
Yeah, yep, absolutely. I like seeing the chronic pain. I like seeing folks with connective tissue disease or uh, fibromyalgia or something like that. I like being able to help people and get in the nitty gritty details of what we need to do to, to fix things. But I also like seeing the fitness folks. It just makes me use a different part of my brain. And I like the variability of the day where seeing some chronic pain, some athletes has just been kind of my dream practice is what I wanted. As great, well as great. Curious if you found one versus the other was notably easier to get patients interested in saying yes to your cash pay offer. Yeah, it was definitely easier to get the EDS folks in the door. I think partly because I have EDS myself and I could pretty immediately identify with things with them and my conversion rate, even in the beginning on getting EDS leads into the clinic was pretty close to hundred percent. The fitness folks were a little bit tougher for me at first. Okay. So at first, so meaning you, you feel like you've made a lot of improvements and changes in, in that area. Yeah. What kinds of things have taken you from lower conversion to higher conversion with the gym and fitness niche? Using your script has been super helpful. I used to keep it up on my computer, but now I don't need it. I kind of just off the top of my head, but using that script and not deviating from it actually has been every time I deviated from it, it didn't go well. So um. (laughs) it's tried and true. I mean, yeah, it is. It's deeply tested. It it works, but just those little things as a PT, when someone's describing the injury, you kind of have an idea of what it is. And, you know, I bet you have pain going up the stairs and they're like, oh, I do. And then you can kind of go from there and really being people are really great that you have a 20 to 30 minute conversation with them before you even mm-hmm. walk, they walk in the door. And I hear that a lot, like, wow, thanks for taking all the time to talk to me about all this. So yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. So then you found your place, you got established with two different niches. What were the top one, two, three tactics, whatever you want to share with us or, or marketing strategies that worked best to generate interested leads and then maybe we can talk a little bit more about the, the conversions and sales part of things. Yeah. Teaching the mobility class at the gym was pretty huge for me in the beginning. And then people would see me at the gym treating someone and you get that interest like, oh, what is she doing over there? Mm-hmm. And that kind of grew pretty well for me. So that was really big. Even now that still happens, people pull me aside and be like, hey, can I ask you a question about this or that? And it doesn't always lead to a patient immediately, but most of those people after a few months will come back for a paid visit. They've asked me a few questions and I've given them a few things to work on. And so that's been huge. Like I said, social media was really not my thing. So, and I joined Facebook just for the mastermind group and for the business. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it before that. So really kind of calling on some of those referral leads and just kind of letting them know that, Hey, I'm now in my own business. Can I drop off some business cards? And I, I actually got a frantic phone call from a physician who referred me a lot of patients at my old job. And she was like, where are you going? So that was a little bit reassuring that like, okay, everything's going to be okay. So yeah, those were kind of my big things up front that I did. And then last year I joined a BNI group, Mm -hmm. which I didn't think I was a BNI type person, but after I finding the right group, I was really, I've been very fortunate for that group. They've helped me a lot. Great. And are you saying that you actually tried a, a different BNI group, didn't feel like it was a fit and then tried to tried more, tried others? Yeah, it was actually someone at the gym invited me to her group and she's like, we're different, I promise. And she was right. It's a, it's, it was a, it's a larger group. It's a really great group of people. And they've been, they've been really great at referrals and just helping me grow. That's cool. I didn't know that that was kind of a thing of being able to a little bit, maybe shop around for groups or was it that you had, had already stopped the other group and had some time without it. And then I just, I didn't actually join the other group. I went for a visitor day and a few okay. meetings and I was just like, I just don't think this is the right fit for me. Okay. And then a few years went by and I just was like, I just don't think that's for me. And I just more, I just wanted to appease this, this patient, there's a um, patient at the gym. And I was like, oh no, she's right. This is a better group, better fit yeah. for me, younger. And yeah. That's a great, I mean, just a great takeaway. I think for those that want to get involved in different types of networking and, and networking groups that, that you can just visit and check it out for a few sessions before joining and really make sure that you find there's often in larger markets, multiple BNI groups, right? So, and yeah, when it, whether it's BNI or something else, I mean, I really strongly recommend it. I mean, just in a recent interview with Trent, part of mm-hmm. our group. He really sings its praises as well. Early on in my practice, doing networking groups was a huge part of getting things rolling. And what I really like about BNI, for those that didn't hear from the last interview, is the accountability part of it. Mm -hmm. And that's like, hey, if you're part of this group, not only are you paying for it, but you have to show up to a certain percentage of... And I think that's huge. I mean, sometimes even like in coaching groups like ours, it's like that accountability piece. A lot of people will, they'll pay just for that because it's the thing that drives you in many cases. And I have a cousin who I think he was paying 
over $2,000 a month for a group, literally wasn't really doing a whole lot actively in terms of showing up to all the trainings and whatever that, that were optional, but there were things that weren't optional and he made damn sure to get them done. And that alone to him was worth paying $2,000 a month. He's like, I know I'll be kicked out of the group if I don't do these things every month. And just, I'm going to just pay for the accountability. So I really like that part of BNI. And, and for those who are getting started or maybe just needing more patience and you don't already have a group like that, I would strongly recommend that for you or your staff. So very good. W what about maybe not necessarily mistakes, but things that fell flat, any tactics or strategies that you attempted, but then you're like, ah, oh, that didn't really produce the way I was hoping. Yeah. So anytime I did try to do the social media thing, it didn't, I got goose eggs on mo most of it, except for I did one fall promotion not last year, the year before. Like, like seasonal fall or like yeah, fall like, down like, on your face? No, no, like a seasonal <laughs> fall, like okay. autumn thing. And I got a whole bunch of people for that, but then I did another one and I got nobody. What so. do you think was the difference? Or did you redo the same thing and you just didn't? Nope. I think the second time I did it, I was already a little bit busier than I had anticipated by the time I put it up on social media. And I just, I didn't follow up with it. I didn't end up posting mm -hmm. it in the gym group that we have on, on Facebook. I just didn't, I got too busy. And then just didn't, I followed up on the, on, I think the one person that I called, but I couldn't get in touch with them. Um, okay. So it was, it was more of just like a, a lack of, of promotional effort yeah. on the second one. And for those interested, maybe some detail on what that autumn promotion was, what the offer was and how did you promote it? When it worked, it was just a simple, I did either an injury assessment risk, or I did an eval of an existing injury or tweak or something that someone had more targeted at the gym fitness kind of niche and posted it in our gym Facebook group and got, and I think eight people in all of them converted to paid evals, or I'm sorry, I paid second visit because I did a discounted eval. I think I did 90, 89 or $99 eval. And I have to say a year and a half later, I still see two of those people for maintenance visits. Nice. Very good. Awesome. And I'll just pause here and mention for those that didn't hear it in the intro that Nikki is going to be a featured member. We do featured member Q and A's. So for anyone who's a part of our mastermind group, it's not always just show up and ask me questions, but it's also ask our featured member questions. And that's going to be happening in early July this year, 2024. And so if anyone had, if you're not hearing me ask a question you have, you can come join us and ask Nikki those questions. And you could certainly submit if you join or hear this afterwards, you can still hear the recording and reach out with that question that you had. We'll make sure we get it answered for you. So, uh, and you can check that out at drjaredcarter.com forward slash mastermind. Oh, and the promo half off the first month is June 50, June 50. So write down your questions and come join us and ask Nikki yourself. Okay. So how long ago was it that you went, that you started and then went full time from here for, uh, up till now? I just want to get a sense of time frame. So I went full time in April of 22. That's right. Okay. And along the way, we've already talked about the things that have really been big producers for you and maybe a little bit of a lesson learned. Don't know that you'll be going back to social media anytime soon, especially with a full schedule. But what other lessons learned would you want to pass along to those who are in the same boat or looking at doing the same thing? Yeah, I think the early on, I got really good at selling the maintenance visits after they were done with their for the fitness folks after they were done with their plan of care and which was great because it filled up my schedule pretty consistently early on. I had a bunch of people come in every month, every six weeks for maintenance visits. Now that I'm fully booked, it's hard to keep those people on my schedule because I just don't have spots for them anymore, which is a good problem to have. But yeah. the sprinkling in that in the beginning of their plan of care that, hey, I do these maintenance visits. So another runner yesterday to help keep them running and people were like, oh, okay, I didn't know PTs did that. Mm -hmm. And so it's that was really beneficial for me in the beginning. Awesome. Let's make sure when you're doing the Q&A and the mastermind, we dig into the real details and scripts and stuff of how you, because that's huge. I mean, it's I've obviously been preaching it for years, but when you can have half of a schedule, yours or staff's full of people that are just coming every week or every month or every quarter, it just makes it so easy to fill, so much easier to just keep things full. Yeah. It's absolutely huge. So, and obviously just not offering or pushing for things that wouldn't be beneficial, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, in most cases, the people that we're treating, they want to remain good and they stop doing their stuff or they keep putting their body through a lot along the way and, and they need maintenance work. So, and I just kind of say that for, cause we always 
whenever I talk about it, there's always those, ah, we shouldn't be making lifelong patients. No, we're, they're lifelong clients, right? And we're keeping them, we're expanding their health span to meet their lifespan. And it's just, I, I think that that concept that we should get them off the schedule and never see them again is fairly antiquated, yes. just my opinion. So we'll get into the details of that with the group in uh, early July. And so April, 2022. So we're coming up. We've, you've just hit year two of full time yep. and fully booked, which is exciting, staying really busy. I also love along the way in our private Facebook group, when you've shared how like having this practice has allowed you to be like, Hey, my kids have a hockey tournament or something happened health wise. And it was okay. I could take the time off to take care of, of my stuff and my family. So that's been great to see as well. What do you see as kind of moving forward? Are you thinking of expanding and getting any other clinicians working with you? Are you already looking in that direction? Yeah. So actually in fall of last year and actually December 1st, I moved into a bigger space because my old space was really teeny tiny. There was no way you could have more than one PT in there. So when this same plaza, when this space opened up, I jumped on it. It was a big renovation, but I think it's worth it. I had a little bit of trepidation in January, like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> but it's been really good. My schedule kind of exploded in the spring and I've just been booking out like a month, five weeks for new patients now. And so I finally this week got all the things I need to hire someone. So I hope to post the job for another PT by the end of the week. Okay. Fantastic. I was kind of hoping that that would be what you said. And I yep. leading in a little bit. And I know we've talked about this in the past and just to kind of bring up this topic for others listening is one, don't, as soon as even way before you're ready to hire, still start meeting people and getting a sense of who you might want to reach out to when you're ready. But being in a really tight niche of like EDS, it can be very long and difficult to find someone who's qualified and, and experienced in treating that. And so for anyone else listening who is in a, a fairly underserved tight niche where there's not a whole lot of providers that are really highly skilled or have that certification or whatever, start really, really early. Even again, if you're not ready to pull the trigger because they might be, they'll be working somewhere else along the way, but that doesn't mean you can't reach out when you are ready, but it can really bridge that gap because- like this. and in the and then like just the market in general these days at the time of this recording, I mean I'm I'm looking right now for another PT and I've never had this much trouble or it's just like I typically would get like ten applicants in the first week or two, and this time I've had like five in two months and I hear the same thing in a cr across a lot of markets so I'm not really saying this to you as much as to everyone listening like especially if you're in a tight niche start early constantly be looking for talent in that niche. So that's exciting. So you're going to be posting within the next week. Remind me what city you're in. I'm in Worcester, Mass. So central Massachusetts. Okay. That's right. And big hockey family. Is that right? If I remember correctly. Uh, yes. It's actually me that plays hockey. I travel oh, that's for right. hockey tournaments. <laughs> yes, that's right now. Okay. The PT with EDS who plays hockey. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> that's what my doctor says every time. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you love what you love. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yep. So yeah, can you can you tell us a little bit about what the the mastermind coaching group, not necessarily just ours, but just having coaching, having a group of people along with a coach has done for you in your practice? Yeah, it's been huge, especially in the beginning when there was things that would come up and I'm like, I don't even know where to start with this. And oftentimes I don't have questions when I get to the mastermind coaches on Tuesday, because if I have a question, I've looked it up because chances are you've already answered it in previous years. So I do go back to some of those previous coaching calls quite a bit and search for whatever I'm looking for more so in the beginning, but I still do it sometimes now. And I need an answer to a question quicker than not go back into old mastermind that's cool. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that too, because I don't always know how many people are really going back to the past ones. And we say it all the time. It's like, go in there and search for any topic and it's going to come up and it's going to show you the exact minute I talk about it or that it's asked about. And so much of it is evergreen. It's not like the strategies necessarily change in most cases. So I'm glad to hear that you're taking advantage of that, of the past content. Yeah, it is good to kind of refresh on certain topics sometimes. Like I had a longer drive up to a hockey game this weekend and I pulled up a previous recording or maybe it was last week's recording that I didn't get to, I remember. And I just put it on because I had an hour drive. So it's just good to just listen while I'm driving and kind of refresh on things. Yeah. And just to kind of echo one of the other things that you said for those listening, whether it's our group that you join or any of them, like show up and just listen in, even if you don't have an active question in that moment, I promise you will learn 
more than from everyone else's questions than your single question that you might ha have had. So, I mean, so many people are like, oh, I didn't know that that was a thing, or I didn't know I didn't know that. Or a year later, it's like, oh, I remember that that was talked about that one time, and this is what I need to do. And so just if you're going to invest in it, which you should show up and utilize it. And, and even if you don't feel like you have any questions, like don't book patients in that spot, keep it blocked and show up. Nikki's been doing it for years now. She's fully booked, growing, kicking butt. And I mean, I see her little zoom square, usually dark with her name, Nikki. She's just, she's just listening in, learning and implementing and ex executing and doing awesome. So yeah. So Nikki, if there's anything else that we hadn't kind of covered or that you might want to leave aspiring or current practice owners, maybe practice owners who would like, who are established, but would like to transition over to cash pay, anything at all that you'd like to leave us with? Yeah. I think one of the biggest changes, positive changes that has happened for me over the last few years is being able to be my own boss and making all the decisions has been obviously great, but it's a better work-life balance. I'm healthier now than I ever have been because I block my schedule to make sure I get in my workouts and I have time to eat a good lunch and stuff like that. So for me, it's just been a healthy change overall. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been an honor to be a part of the, the journey with you. And I appreciate you sharing your lessons learned along the way and the wisdom that you've acquired with the entire audience. And again, for anyone interested in joining us to ask Nikki, any of the questions that you have that I didn't ask today, drjaredcarter.com forward slash mastermind and on checkout use June 50 as your promo code will give you half off the first month. All right. Thank you, Nikki, so much. I appreciate you taking the time out of your fully booked schedule to help us out and spread the word and help inspire people. I'm definitely, it's been an inspiration working with you. Great. Thanks, Jared. Yeah.